Hola, buenos días o buenas tardes y o buenas noches. ¿Cómo estás? Me? Me muy bien. Today we're going to be looking at ticker symbol OEC. That is Orion. That is a specialty chemical company in Luxembourg. Uh, if you bought this stock when it IPO'd in 2015, you are probably not very happy. Uh, the stock is right around IPO prices. However, if they do offer a dividend, you're probably just fine because you've been getting paid every quarter, every year. So uh, we're going to see if the stock deserves to be at night $17. We're going to see what institutions and hedge funds are doing. We're going to look at some advanced charting. Fingers crossed. Yes, I've done this one before. Very nice. Okay. I uh, don't know when I did this, but uh, definitely was before 2023 at the max so and they do offer a dividend see all these little green circles down here they do offer a dividend that's pretty cool so uh you're not too upset let's see what we got uh rsi the strength is kind of with the bears at the moment as we can see the stock is down seven dollars in one month the macd is also heading down money flows going up so we might have some smart money buying. We'll see what institutions and uh, hedge funds are doing. Uh, the relevant, relative momentum indicator is actually going down. Wow. Wow, 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 wee, wow, wee. Okay. So they have sales of $1.9 billion. They are profitable. They do offer a small, very small dividend. Something not worth <laughs> staying in the stock for almost 10 years and being flat. Uh, they are currently cheap. In the future, they are even cheaper. So that is extremely good. That means that this company does have a, pan, a plan to get back on track. Um, quick ratio is not over one, which is a little bit of a beige flag for me. Debt, uh, they are addressing their debt. You can see their debt is 1.6. Long-term debt is 1.3. So they are addressing the debt. Gross margin, 22%. You'd like to see something a little bit, typically me, but I mean, it could be just the year, this year. Uh, again, gross margins, they're barely profitable at the moment. Institutions own a lot of the stock. Overall low float stock. Um, I mean, honestly, really, really just being honest and my head is right in the way of everything. I know you guys are looking at it, but let me just bring it back. So as I was saying, uh, quick ratio, kind of a beige flag, debts being addressed. Um, gross margin right here, 22%, barely profitable right here. Institutions of 95%, just caught you back up. Uh, sales, we can see they've kind of plateaued and now 2023, they brought in 1.89 billion. 2024, we're at $1.91 billion. So we're on a path to do better than we did in 2023. However, not a relatively large jump. EPS has definitely plateaued 1.73, 1.73. Uh, I guess the silver lining in all this, the shares outstanding are going down, which means there is natural and organic accumulation of the shares. So, um, yeah. Let's see what we get here for our potential stock price. So they have a markup almost at 1 billion. I'm going to call it 1 billion because they're less than 3 million away. So we'll just give it to them 1 billion. Uh, income is 78 million, 300,000. And sales, 1 billion, 910 million. All right, uh, let's go down and look at the cash and the debts. So uh, Q1 this year, they did 502 million. Q1 last year, 500 million. So they did an increase of 2.2 million. However, gross profit is down. They spent $16 million more than they did last year, only to make 2.2 million. Q2 this year, they did 477 million. Q2 last year, 458. Okay, so they spent... 367 million for gross profit of 109. So there's 
they're overall not as good as they were in 2023, as we can see, unfortunately. All right, the CEO spent 349,000 doll hairs. Wow, that is, and down here, 323 million doll hairs. That is what I love, love, love to see. I'm already a fan of this stock. I'm a fan. Okay, um, let's look at what we got here. And typically, I don't know why, but foreign companies outside the US don't really show insider buying or selling. So that's, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, okay. So cash, they have 34,200,000. Debt, debt, 660 million, 700,000. All right, before we move on, total assets, 1.9 billion, total liabilities, 1.4 billion. Uh, we've got about a $500 million buffer and we've, We've improved. When I say we, I'm talking as the company. The company's improved uh, in terms of getting more assets to liability separation. So can't knock them there. I mean, the CEO is buying. That's a good amount. And he just bought at $17. What's the stock trading at? 17 I mean, this is the same level as it was back in 2015. No, no I'm sorry, 2014. Same level as 2014. Has the company done better since 2014? I would go out on a limb and say, yeah, the company's improved. Yeah. Okay, uh, back to the calculation at hand. Total shares outstanding, 57,900,000. $40 stock. Did I mess something up? I mean, I gave them the billion here. They're not quite at a billion. Did I retract the billion? It's going to take $10 off share price. I think I got to take it off. Rules are rules. $23 stock. Do I have everything else right? 78.3, 1.91. Yeah. Cash was right. Debt was right. Okay. So $23.52 stock. I wanted to add the nine the billion but i i can't and i also want to note this calculator does not account for dividends because the company has given away some of their cash to shareholders as a gift for holding on to a stock that's been flat for 10 years that's my big brown sad face that i just tried to do so bummer uh 23 stock price analysts have 25 dollars uh, the latest we have is $25. Uh, I mean, obviously this is a banger of a deal, right? The CEO's buying a lot. Target price is 25 bucks. What are institutions and hedge funds doing? I'm guessing they own more than 95%. <clears throat> what do we got? 107. That's a 12, over a 12% increase. And we are climbing up over here. So. Okay. Pizena sold 30%. T. Rowe Price sold 19%. William Blair sold 30%. BlackRock sold 1%. So we've got the majority of people buying. I'm recording this on the 16th, by the way, which is a Friday. A lot of my content is evergreen, so you can come back here three years from now or watch it five years in the future. Wait, you can't go back three years from now. You can watch it five years in the future, and my lines, projections, supports, resistance will be the same. So that's, uh, you know, benefit to watching me, I guess. So you can come in here. You can watch, look at all the different buys and sells. Um you can do that your own on your own. But uh, yeah, overall, adding, it's cheap. It gets even cheaper, which we love to see. And this is something I like to see as well. And I don't think uh, Wall Street has this one right at the moment. 
So while we have this, let's just clear it out. We'll call this 8, 20. I keep putting 24. Why do I keep 16, 24? Okay. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to attempt to do uh, Fibonacci arcs, and we're going to see how well this stock uh, respects these Fibonacci arcs because it could let us know where the potential um, next support is. Like, is the stock going to go below 16? It got down to 15 bucks. Is the stock going to go below 15 or did we hit the bottom? So to establish this, we're going to go to this, our all-time high to our all-time low. Uh, and let's let's just look a little bit closer here. So what I want to do is I want to see how well the candles respect the Fibonacci arc. So we have perfect resistance, perfect resistance, great resistance, great resistance, great resistance. Testing breaks through, perfect support, great resistance, perfect resistance. What's up? Tests, perfect resistance to this candle. Perfect, I mean, this is like very close. Perfect support, almost perfect. I mean, that's perfect support. Test, great test, great test, great test. Perfect support falls through great test of our middle candle perfect test of resistance for middle candle perfect support perfect support here perfect resistance perfect uh almost perfect resistance perfect support great support great test of resistance right there does not go unnoticed perfect resistance perfect resistance perfect resistance here i mean this is like perfect supports here Great test, great test, great supports. Great support. I mean, how many times did I say perfect? So now we're going to go from this all-time low of 593. That would have been the time to buy. 593, cycle low to cycle high. Wow. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple things here. Number one, I'm going to change the colors for us because it's hard to see. Okay, so we're looking at the perps. Okay, uh, perfect resistance here comes up. Great resistance, great resistance. Great resistance, great resistance. Perfect support falls through, test. Great resistance, nice test, perfect support here, perfect resistance is right here, comes up, and now we are here. Okay, so we've, it's safe to say we've surpassed this Fibonacci arc, this red one. Uh, I guess I'll keep it for now, but what I want to see now is, is this our bottom bottom? It might be. It really might be. We'll make this a yellow or something. Let's see. And we'll just focus on this. Okay. Okay. Uh, great support. Perfect resistance test, come through. Great test of resistance, good test of support, good test of support, perfect resistance, breaks through, comes down, great test, great test, perfect resistance, perfect support, comes down, come per look at that, perfect test right there. We might have hit a bottom of $15 and 54 cents for OEC, however, However, apologies. We are not done analyzing. There might be a high chance that this stock rebounds up to 1805 by the end of October. And I only say that because this support on uh, the 
not the 20th, um, 2020. We do have perfect support confirmed here. And then this candle is kind of going to be our lead, our lead candle here. Let's look at our historical supports and resistances here. I mean, that's a solid. So we boom, spike, test, fall, test. Okay. I mean, could we get back to $13 eventually? Possibly. I don't know. All right. Um, so we're trading in this huge triangle at the moment. You can kind of see in this area. I mean, there's a decent chance we get some congestion over the next few years. This dividend does not persuade me to hold it at the moment um, or add it. Um, I think, you know what, a good a good indicator might be is uh, end of August, maybe September, check September 1st, if we're over 18. And I only say that because we could be, and this might be a stretch, let me know what you think in the comments, a beginning of a big breakout or a head and shoulders. So we have our left shoulder, our head on this neck. And this these lines right here are the neckline. And then our, sh our right shoulder would probably break through the 26 and we might see it have some perfect uh, alignment with this Fibonacci arc here. So this is one to put for October. So I'm going to set an alert here, actually. Crosses above. Yo. So I'll get a text and an email. And it'll let me know. I think it could be the potential of something good. And I only say that because this is severely undervalued. The CEO has purchased like 600,000 plus dollars worth. Institutions are loading. They're, I mean, they're addressing their debt. Quick ratio could be better. Yeah, I, you know what? I wish companies, instead of offering a dividend, put, make sure your balance sheet is extremely sexy before doing that. Um, but I have an alert out. I'll be watching this one. I think this is, uh, I mean, left shoulder, head. Yeah, it's, it's, it's extremely, extremely possible. So, uh, yeah, I, I might be forced to take a position in this. We'll see. Um, <laughs> I'm forcing myself. Anyway, uh, that's all I've got for you guys. This is uh this is an interesting one. It's been trading the same for 10 years. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, hope you're doing well. Talk to you later. Adios.